one of the more fan-pleasing ranges from Big Finish audios in the world of Doctor Who have been the classic Doctors and New Monsters box sets. Now, they've not done any of these since 2017, but you basically get a classic actor who played the Doctor and then team them up or have them fight against a villain that is established from the new series. You had a box set which had the Sixth Doctor with the Jadoom, Seventh Doctor with the Sycorax, the Fourth and Eighth Doctors with the Vashta Narada, etc. And the last box set was five years ago, but we finally have a return for classic doctors new monsters this is volume three the stuff of nightmares we've got the fourth the third the sixth and the eighth doctors with the dream crabs from last christmas the tavolians from the god complex and under the lake and before the flood and not the mocks of balhoon the hawks of balhoon played by dan starkey here uh, so it's a pretty interesting list of villains it seems like they've sort of been you know um going to the through the bottom of the barrel i mean not all of them can be smash hits like the weeping angels or the silence but we work with what we're given here but we still have a really cool team here we've got the fourth doctor uh we've got the uh, third doctor eighth doctor and the sixth doctor of course because we need even more of him even more of me so with this box set, we've got four stories here. We've got um, the the house that Hawks built by Tim Foley, the Tavolian who knew too much by Robert Valentine, together in Eclectic Dreams by Roy Gill, and If I Should Die Before I Wake by John Dorney from a story by Jacqueline Rayner. So you've got a really uh, interesting box set here because it also not just dabbles around with different new series monsters, but also really dabbles around with genre, like the house that um, that Hawks built is unambiguously a haunted house story that a volume who knew too much is like a hitchcockian crime thriller and together in eclectic dreams and if i should die before i wake a sort of like uh first the first one's like sort of um uh like almost art house horror and if i should die before i wake is like greek mythology stuff the mocks that hawks built it's it's not it's not a title that kind of rolls off the tongue but for uh, the stuff of nightmares, what really ties it together, though, is the idea of stories and storytelling. Because, you know, Big Finish, they love stories for the love of stories. So let's talk about first the house that Hawks built. This is a third Doctor story. You've got Tim Traylor stepping into the shoes of John Pertwee, who's no, like, who's no longer with us. And you've also got Sadie Miller, who's stepping into the shoes of her mother, Elizabeth Sladen, for Sarah Jane Smith. And we don't have the mocks of Balhoon. We have the Hawks of Balhoon, who billions of years in our future earth is more or less a dilapidated landscape but there is still a haunted house that the hawks has, has recently bought at auction and he wants to turn it into a tourist attraction and the third doctor and sarah jane are getting caught up in an adventure there let's play a quick clip hello anyone down here it's so dark hang on i've got a torch somewhere ah two torches here you go, Hawks. Oh. Oh. Oh, my. Those pipes are humongous. Yes. Not our parcels, but clearly conduits for it. Hang on. Look at the floor again. More sonic patterns? I don't think so. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. It's some sort of shape scorched into the ground. I've seen this symbol in some of my stories. A pentagram. A symbol of magical power. But what's it doing here? It must have been in the original plans. The workers wouldn't have just put it here. You three wait here. I'll follow these pipes down that cave. Ah, what did you say about splitting up? We'll all stay close together. Strength in numbers. Oh, Sarah! Oh, come on! Francesca... The path looks rather rocky. Perhaps I ought to hold your hand for stability. Yes, Uncle. I've got you. It's, it's an interesting choice of new monster, because the Hawks of Balhoon is sort of kind of just on I, along for the ride. While it was an interesting character i guess or an interesting thing to throw into the end of the world in series one he's not exactly particularly charismatic or like it's not something where you think oh the mocks of balhoon we definitely m need more of that but no so we have the hawks of balhoon instead who does not have a hover chair but sort of just waddles around but voiced really really well by dan starkey what's interesting about this story though the house that hawks built is that it is 
playing with genre in a really interesting and meta way it is not only a like a haunted house story but it also plays with like true crime as well like it also plays with like murder mystery crime like Ag agatha christie as well even to the point that maybe the butler did it and it's a, re a really interesting subversion of that as well uh, basically the hawks of balhoon has bought this tourist attraction to bring people into into earth to to see the legacy of the planet and it is also something that has a big legacy behind it in terms of stuff that's been happening in like underground beneath the house as well this true like ghost story these apparitions that are in the house and whether it's like a murder mystery or haunted house stuff the hox has been absorbing all of this pop culture and has been reading all of these books he mentions it in the clip i've seen the pentagram in some of my stories so it's got an interesting angle to it where it's it's able to play with the genre there but it's just a really solid like horror story it has a really nice ending where i even think it goes a bit deeper into the new series as well uh, specifically in regards to the story 42 but if i talk any more i kind of risk maybe spoiling the ending of the story uh tim trelaw sadie miller terrific as many people were saying in the clip as well uh, sadie miller seems to be getting better at channeling her mother as sarah jane smith every single time she comes back to one of these stories uh, i completely agree as well she was great at first but i think the more she does it the better she's getting at it and it's becoming really really self-evident i think that the the house that hawks built it's a fun hour story that plays with like the haunted house tropes and it's interesting to throw the third doctor in there as well the doctor who's sort of always in command and always in charge and is always ready to to do some karate chop action but can't really do that against ghosts so how does he sort of work around that uh, an interesting doctor pairing with genre not necessarily a interesting combination of doctor with monster the hawks of balhoom it's it, it he's fine there's just not really too much there so i it's sort of with those lowered expectations of what i'd be getting into that i listen to the next story the tavolian who knew too much by robert valentine which sees the fourth doctor played by tom baker and companion leela played by louise jameson going to rome uh, and there they find a tivolian a very very timid creature who you may remember from the god complex and under the lake and before the flood the tivolians for those of you who remember are an incredibly subservient race who will surrender to everybody who have a primal need to be subjugated as a uh, as a defense mechanism as a survival um as a survival strategy and the uh, the creature who we've got here is called uh, timbal phoebus played by robert dawes and he gets caught up in a hitchcockian crime story where there is another tavolian in rome who gives him this data bank and he's like you look after this because i'm on the run from these other people and then this other innocent tavolian because they don't because people in rome they don't expect to find a second volume but there he is so he becomes the scapegoat and the fourth doctor and leela get involved leela gets kidnapped however meaning that the fourth doctor has to team up with the tavolian let's play a clip temple how much currency do you have in your money belt i'm not wearing them uh, oh, enough why enough to get us to tivoli tivoli not that tivoli we are going to rescue leela we Doctor, I'm an accountant, not a commando. I'm meant to be taking a rest cure. Inspector Jallo said to... Well... Timbal you know, Phoebus, you may be an accountant, but I am the Doctor. A Time Lord from the planet Gallifrey, I have defeated Dalek, seen off Cybermen, and given the Sontarans an awful lot to think about. And from this moment forth, you will do exactly as I say. Do you understand? <sighs> Yes. Oh, wonderful. Now, we are going to mount a rescue operation. Okay. And then we're going to get to the bottom of this mystery. Right. Because there's something sinister afoot, and goodness knows why, you, yes, you, seem to be the key to it all. Lucky me. 
There's a really interesting interview clip uh, in the behind the scenes of that from Robert Valentine, who wrote the story. And he talks about how when he was given the brief and was told that Tivolian is going to be the villain who I have to write the story for, or the monster I have to write the story for, I should say, because the Tivolian here isn't necessarily the villain. Tim Bolphibus is not the villain here. He talks about how the real conflict is not having to oppose a, a, a race like the Tivolians. The real conflict is having a Tivolian as your ally and how dangerous that is because you've got, as we saw in the God Complex, a race that will basically betray you the first chance they get if it gives them a chance at, um, at subserviency. And Scott Joe Tom Baker sounds magnificent in this. Oh, he sounds magnificent like the whole time. Like he's so great in this. And Louise Jameson is really fun as well. But yeah, this is the Tom Baker and, um, and Timbal Phoebus show. It's really cool. It's a really cool story. Out of the four... Oddly enough, this was my favorite. This is a really fun Hitchcockian romp, uh, kind of like the man who knew too much. And it's a, well, of course, you know, the Tavoli knew too much. That is the, I didn't even think about that for a second. <laughs> my brain just went for a second. For a moment there, I thought I was being really, really, really clever with my film references. But you've got this Tavolian who is now having to defend this vital data chip. Uh, in Rome and going on a massive adventure he goes on motorbike chases the car gets sunk in the canals there uh, and uh, uh, you got a crime boss you've got some twists and turns it was honestly just a really really fun romp it was um it was a really interesting subversion of what you'd expect from a box set like this, where it's kind of like, okay, we've got the classic monster. What does the Doctor have to do to defeat it in this setting? But no, it played really fast and loose with the premise. And the actual main antagonist at the end uh, was a really interesting subversion of what you expect from Tivolians. And yeah, I won't say too much because that genuinely is like spoiler territory. And I try to be spoiler free in these big finish reviews, but there's some really interesting direction that the story takes. The fourth Doctor is terrific as usual here. It honestly is a great spiritual successor or predecessor, I should say, because it's not uh, it's not Romana or post Romana. It's pre Romana because it's Leela. It's a spiritual predecessor to the City of Death. And if that sounds interesting to you, then the Tavolian who knew too much sounds terrific. I, I don't think it will be everyone's favourite, but it was mine. Because it was just so much fun with a real sense of wit, great pace to it. I thought Robert Valentine's script here was really strong. Uh, and yeah, it's also just great to have the fourth Doctor be like consistently in some really, really great releases this year. The second box set that came out, the one, um, I forgot what it was called, it wasn't Solo, the Nine, that was really good, that fourth Doctor box set. The Nine and now this, Tom Baker's had a really good couple of months uh, with Big Finish. The next one, however, is a little bit more interesting. We've got Together in Eclectic Dreams by Roy Gill, which seems is the sixth doctor with a brand new companion again even more of me you've got uh, marie who is uh, the sixth doctor's companion and the he takes her to the archipelago of high dream because she's been having these nightmares this it's this facility which takes a look at everybody's uh <laughs> lonely sparrow it, it takes a look at their um their their thought patterns and their dreams and treats them <laughs> I swear to, what have i done it's colin baker i'm sorry it's even more of him I'm, i didn't choose this it's because this is the box sets that we get however as is implied by the cover and by the premise there's something afoot at the archipelago of high dream the dream crabs from last christmas are there and they make up the second half of this box set with a sixth doctor story um and it goes in some really cool directions let's play a real quick clip Doctor! Mary! Get me out of these restraints! Oh. Uh, uh, watch out for that one! It's a tiddler, but it's still got a snap! Use your feet, not your hand! Uh, get back! Uh, and untie me! Use your hands, not your feet! Uh, the dream crabs are here as well? Uh, oh, they've been here all the time! Ah! A potted menace lurking inside every dream guide, waiting for an unsuspecting sleeper. Hello, Doctor. Well, this is a pretty mess. You'll be wanting saving. You? What are you doing here? He was trapped in a dream. I sprung him. Trapped in a dream. Bit of a rookie error. 
I thought you were such a promising young pup. Pup? Young pup? I'm older than you. Not wiser, evidently. Oh, and what's so wise about getting yourself strapped to a table? Hmm? Doctors, can we focus on the crabs? Please! Everyone, get back! Get off me! There's another! This way, towards the door. So yeah, this is actually, kind of, a multi-doctor story with Colin Baker and Paul McGann, which is such an interesting and cool pairing. I wish they maybe did more of it here, but this is the second half of the box set. Sixth Doctor with Dream Crabs, and then Eighth Doctor with Dream Crabs, with mild crossover. So, what's interesting with the Dream Crabs, though, is that for last Christmas, they already sort of played their hands, like Stephen Moffat already sort of exhausted... The possibilities logistically with the dream crabs, the dreams within dreams, the, oh, it turns out that they're, they're in somebody else's dream. And unfortunately, while it's a strong ending to the box set, both together in Eclectic Dreams and If I Should Die Before I Wake, it doesn't really go beyond what we saw the dream crabs do in Last Christmas. Uh, we had someone in the chat, the Gurkman, calling it now, the new companion doesn't exist and the, brain, and the brain crabs already have the Doctor. I'm of course not going to say what happens in the box set, but the fact that you're able to make a prediction like that kind of shows that there's only so much that you can do with a premise like the dream crabs. Or maybe there is a lot you can do, but you really, really have to experiment with them. And this one plays it a little bit too safe. That because the fact that you already know going into it that it's a, tre- a dream crab story, it's like, okay, you're already second guessing everything. You can only introduce the dream crabs as a mystery box once, and they already did it on TV. You can't really do it again for this two-part story that ends this box set. It doesn't really work. You have the sixth Doctor in this new companion, and you're already kind of trying to second-guess the plot. It's hard to really engage with it, because you're trying way too hard to think, or at least I was trying way too hard to think about what direction is this going in, what's happening, whose dream are we in, are the dream crabs even real, is Paul McGann even this sexy in real life, I don't know, this is just in my head, and it makes it hard to kind of engage with the story, and it also makes the the stakes feel a little bit lackadaisical, like, I don't really care about this people because they might not even be real. They could just be part of the dream. It messes around with the story structure a little bit too much and not in interesting or subversive ways. I, it's a fine story. <laughs> Russell said, no, Paul, really, is that sexy? Oh, good. Thank God. But it, it's, it's a fine story together in Eclectic Dreams. Well written, atmospheric. The soundscape's great. The music's great. The dream crabs are really cool. But it's hard to really get invested into it because when you have the dream cramps, you're second guessing everything and it means that you're not really engaging with the story. Or at least I can only talk about my experiences, of course, but I hope you understand where I'm coming from with it, right? Like, it's not like um, with the mocks of Balhoon where you kind of have a a clean slate. It's like, oh, what's this creature going to do? Or what's their relationship? Or what Easter eggs can we have from their prior appearance or his cousin's prior appearance? It's more like, okay, what are we going to be doing with the dream crabs this time? Whose dream are we in this week, folks? And it was kind of hard to engage with the story overall. Colin Baker's really cool. We got a new companion uh, played by Susan Hingley, who plays Mary. She's really cool as well. Uh, she's a great companion for the Sixth Doctor, who you know has another companion this year as well. We had Hebe with the Waterworlds box set. So it, it's a fine story. I just found it kind of difficult to engage with. However, we have If I Should Die Before I Wake. And we've got the Eighth Doctor fans in the house. Eighth Doctor is with Charlie Pollard again. India Fisher is back as Charlie, who's had another return to Big Finish this past year. Uh, There was the the Further Adventures of uh, of Charlie Pollard, which I've still not listened to yet. It's kind of the only Big Finish release that I've bought this year that I still haven't listened to, because I I need to finish uh, Series 1 of the 8th Doctor and Charlie Adventures before I get into that box set. I'm hoping to try and do it by the end of the year, I apologise. But yeah, Charlie Pollard's back. And this one actually does play with some interesting structure when it comes to the dream crabs but i still think you didn't really need the dream crabs to do it basically charlie is finding herself in adventures of greek mythology she's finding herself in the labyrinth she's with 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 the minotaur with the medusa and the eighth doctor is narrating these stories and is helping charlie try and face these threats let's play a quick clip because this is really fun thieves 
one of the mightiest of the Greek cities, but protected by one of its mightiest guardians. Why is it always Greece? What? Can't you just focus on the story? I'm trying to be atmospheric. I was simply wondering if it had any significance. I like Greece. Obviously. But I think it might be nice to have a little variety. And I think you're forgetting what we're doing here. Could you hurry up, please? Time does pass differently in a dream, I admit, but it's still passing. We can't afford to waste it quibbling about the location. Very well. Is that a bird? No, and it's not a plane either, before you ask. I wasn't going to. Halt, traveller! The Sphinx. Sorry, isn't that Egypt? What? Aren't Sphinxes Egypt? Some are, yes, but not this one. It's a kind of parallel mythology. Egyptian sphinxes are usually male. This one is female. Yes, I can see that. Meaning, she's Greek. Of course. Now I remember. She's an Oedipus, isn't she? Correct. He was quite the mummy's boy. So yeah, I can see the chat lighting up. Very happy that there's um, more Eighth Doctor and Charlie Pollard adventures, and this is really fun. I I'm, I haven't listened to that much Eighth Doctor and Charlie stuff. I apologise. I'm making my way through the earlier stuff, but I I do love their dynamic. You do have this sort of like romanticist Doctor uh, that's like you feels like something that Lord Byron would would uh, come up in a fever dream, and then you pair him up with Charlie, and Charlie is just so like down to earth cuts through the chase is almost like tomboyish um as well who they, they complement each other but they really do clash as well i love it how the eighth doctor is trying to tell these stories uh but charlie is like second guessing the narration the whole time really fun lily sparrow not a chat we've got to listen to more charlie stuff i'm working my way through it okay i still need to listen to a uh, minuet in hell and then i can make my way through the new adventures of uh, the eighth doctor and charlie i'm sorry busy busy person uh, and I, I know that chi I know that Chimes of Midnight is amazing, folks. I know. I need to make my way through them. But yeah, we had this, The Further Adventures. This came out back in January. And I have bought it. I've got it. I I've, it's upstairs. I have a, a hard copy. I have a CD copy. But I'm told that this happens after Minuet in Hell, but before the next story. So I, I, need, I need to make my way through this. I'm sorry. Busy, busy chap. So much big finish to listen to. But yeah, this was really cool. I actually think that this did do some more subversive stuff uh, with the Dream Crabs uh, uh, that uh, Together in Eclectic Dreams did not do. And yeah, Minuet and Hell is Yikes, not a fan of Minuet. I know it has a reputation. I, I just, That's all I know about it. I don't know what happens in it or what the reputation is. I just know it has a reputation. Anyway, stay on target. If I Should Die Before I Wake by John Dorney. Really cool. Uh, yeah, I dug it a lot. I thought it was really fun. I thought that um, Charlie having to face these threats from Greek mythology or maybe Egyptian mythology, as she uh, argues with the Eighth Doctor, uh, was a really great approach to take it. And I also think because we had the Eighth Doctor in Together in Eclectic Dreams briefly, that it didn't feel like this was uh, the Eighth Doctor overpowering the whole box set. This is like an ensemble box set. It's a massive cast for all of the stories. Uh, but this one allows um, Charlie to almost be like the star of the show in the last one. So, yeah, it's... I don't really have too much to say about it though. It's it's something I probably would want to listen to it again in the near future just in case like there's more um there's more subtext to it. But yeah, I, it it's just a solid Eighth Doctor and Charlie story and if you wanted more of that you're going to get more of that. That's what I think this box set is kind of some like that's the best way to summarize it. I haven't listened to Classic Doctors New Monsters Volume 2 yet. I've listened to volume one. There's no story in here that sort of matches Jadoon in Chains or um, kind of plays with expectations like the Sycorax story in that box set as well with Sylvester McCoy and the Sycorax. Um, th this is still a solid box set. It's not must listen. It's not essential listening. Uh, I think if there's one story that you should really listen to in this one, it is the Tivoli and Who Knew Too Much. But yeah, it's a fine box set. It's all right. I, it, you know, if this sounds like your jam, if these are monsters or creatures who you want to hear more from then go right ahead i think however considering just how much big finish is coming out like this month it's this month is mad if you have to budget this might be a bit of a skip maybe when it goes on sale uh years from now or you know i, I don't think that this is um i must listen but it's fine it's fine 
Uh, Russell Chichen is the, uh, this is the first uh, classic Doctor New Monsters Eighth Doctor story to not be in the Time War too? Yeah, because um, for the first one, it was the Santarans, which are a classic monster, but the Time War was what made them new. Um, but yeah, one second, I was gonna. So yeah, in terms of like stuff coming out for Big Finish this month, Diary of River Song Series Ten, um, Sixth Doctor adventures purity undreamed the ninth doctor into the stars there's a new torchwood set as well gallifrey war room one allegiance and also if you're a jerry anderson fan you've got some thunderbirds and captain scarlet this is a massive month for big finish this is probably the bi like the busiest month of the year so far in terms of doctor who releases so if you you know you have you're trying to save up for one of these and want a safe skip then I don't want to say this is a safe skip, but it's not a must to listen, if that makes sense. I apologize. But they do have another one of these coming out in October 2023, uh, approaching the 60th anniversary of the show. Classic Doctor's New Monsters 4, Broken Memories. We got the cover and some of the details for this over this past week. It's the 4th Doctor, the 6th Doctor, the 7th Doctor, and the 8th Doctor. Uh, and Colin Baker's back. Even more of me. So we've got the Clockwork Droids from Girl in the Fireplace. We've got the Silence from Series 6 and Series 7. Um, and we've got uh, Invasion of the Body Stealers. It's those weird brain things from the Return of Doctor Mysterio. I can't remember what they're called. And I do not particularly care. I'm very sorry. So, <laughs> you've got some... <laughs> Lonely Sparrow doesn't like the meme. I'm so sorry. So, Invasion of the Body Stealers by Jonathan Morris. The Queen of Clocks by Jacqueline Rayner. The Silent Priest by David K. Barnes. And The Silent City by David K. Barnes. Harmony Shawl. As if you have that... Off the Did you Google that? Who remembers the Harmony Shawl? Who? Who has those names off the top of their head? Who? I demand to know who's responsible for this. Okay, come on, you know what? I wish I wish Big Finish got in partnership with Audible so I could use my credits on it. You can do for the Tenth Doctor sets, actually. The Tenth Doctor ones uh, you can get on uh, Big Finish. Uh, on Audible, sorry. 